Father in heaven, we enter your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise. We are grateful today for the breath of life, and as we go throughout this midday power surge, we pray for revival and reformation. We pray for the prodigals to return home before it's too late. And those who are lukewarm, indolent, asleep, professing to be in your remnant movement, be reformed before it is too late. Awakened before it is too late. Be prepared before it is too late. Bless us now, we pray. Forgive us of our sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Greetings, salutations. Welcome to this Midday Power Surge, Sunday, March 29th, 2020. This is your spiritual oasis on this pilgrim journey toward heaven. Welcome one, welcome all to this Midday Power Surge. Stafford, Stella, Matthew, Maranatha, Michelle, Eddie, all right, Fiona, Jonathan, R Richard, Anthony, Leon, Lexi, all right, friends, Lorenzo, welcome one, welcome all to this midday power surge. Let's all turn on our Bibles. We want to begin this all important midday power surge by referencing the scripture from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 7. The Bible speaks about the mystery of iniquity. I want everyone in the forum in the chat room to put that phrase down the mystery of iniquity second thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 7 all right friends and i want all of you to contemplate this important point with me number one mystery of iniquity how could it be that lucifer who was a covering cherub yes friends lucifer the son of the morning, Lucifer, who walked in the very presence of God, became Satan, arch rival to Jesus Christ. That is a mystery, the mystery of iniquity. Friends, prayerfully read about this in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 12, 13, all the way through. Also Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 through verse 14 the mystery of iniquity lucifer becoming satan now friends think about this another mystery how could it be a professed christian lives like the devil a professed christian lives like satan think about that and friends throughout scripture the symbol or may i say one of the symbols used to depict Jesus is the Lamb. John 1, 29, the Lamb of God. And one symbol used to illustrate Satan is the dragon, the Lamb, the dragon, the mystery. First question for you, those of you in the chat, those of you in the forum. Which nation in the Bible is depicted as a lamb, a lamb-like beast? but will speak as a dragon. Who is that nation, my friends? Meryl, Luke, Jocelyn, Nordia, Samara, Sherna. Who is that nation? Okay, Mozart, commandment keeper. Danny, Tamika, it is. James, it is. The United States of America. Go to Revelation 13 with me. Friends, the mystery of the United States of America is seen as a lamb-like nation with two horns, but America will speak as a dragon. That's a mystery, my friends. If that's clear, send in the amens. Revelation chapter 13. The Bible speaks of a lamb-like beast. Beast in prophecy is likened unto a nation. Write this chapter down in the book, Great Controversy. God's law immutable. You can read more about America in prophecy. Now, friends, secondly, the Bible tells us that this nation has two horns. Nation, beast. Daniel 7, verse 17. Daniel 7, 
Verse 23, two horns. Horns represent powers. Daniel 8 and verse 7. Revelation 17 and verse 12. Horns represent powers. What are those two prominent powers of America? When she rose in the 1700s, what are those two powers? Thank you, John C. All right, my friends, it is religious freedom and civil freedom, also known as Protestantism and Republicanism. Now, friends, Revelation 13, verse number 11, use a significant phrase. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, underscore coming up. Put in the chat room, coming up. Hear me now, friends. She came up, coming up, lamb-like, but will speak as a dragon. And the way how she came up, she will contradict in the last days. Is that point clear? The way how she came up, coming up, she will contradict in the last days. Look at this statement. Great Controversy, page 440, paragraph 1, it says, But the beast with lamb-like horns was seen coming up out of the earth. Red words. Back then, it represented America. She grew up gradually and peacefully. Put those two words down. Gradually, peacefully. But in the last days, my friends, it's going to be a gradual step to America becoming aggressive. Gradually, peacefully, America now is becoming gradually aggressive. A gradual, aggressive, gradually, aggressively. If that's clear, my friends, put that down in the forum. Lamb-like, dragon. Let's move on. Great Controversy, page 440. It goes on to say, The beast was seen coming up out of the earth. And according to the translators, the word he rendered coming up, coming up, literally signifies to grow or spring up as a plant. A prominent writer describing the rise of the United States speaks of what, friends? What is that phrase in blue? The mystery of her coming forth from vacancy. The mystery of iniquity. The mystery of America. Lamb-like, speaking like a dragon. The mystery, Lucifer, becoming Satan. The mystery of America. Come back to the screen. Last phrase, red words, like a silent seed. America grew into empire. Now we can say, like a silent seed, America is growing into a dragon-like power. And what says Revelation 12 verse 17? The dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war. With the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, the mystery of America. Can we move on? Revelation 13, verse number 11 says, coming up, we cover that coming up. Next phrase, two horns like a lamb. Look at this statement here, my friends. Great controversy, page 441. It says, and he had two horns like a lamb. The lamb-like horns indicate youth, innocence, and gentleness. What three words? Put those three words in the chat room, in the forum, on your notepads. Youth, innocence, and gentleness. Now we can add youth. She's now grown, adult. Innocence, no longer innocent. She's guilty of many crimes. All right? Then it says gentleness. Gentleness? No, my friends. America is now brutal. Brutal, my friends. Inhumane. Put those three words down, my friends. Oh, yes. She's grown to an adult now. Not 1776. 2020. Innocence? No. Guilty. Gentleness? No. 
brutal and inhumane. The mystery of America. And when I come to this current event shortly, you will see it, my friends. Notice as we move on. Among the Christian exiles who first fled to America and sought an asylum, and sought an asylum from royal oppression and priestly intolerance. So when she grew up, coming up in the 1700s, those who came to America, they were fleeing from royal oppression, that state. Priest intolerance, that's church. Church state union in the old world of Europe and Asia. But the lamb-like beast America will speak as a what dragon. So what will happen in America? Church state union to bring royal oppression and priestly intolerance. May I add? Priestly? That's Roman Catholicism. Now it's going to be apostate Protestantism. Go with me to Amos. Amos chapter 5. The Bible, put it down in the chat room. Amos chapter 5. The Bible tells us in verse number 18 of Amos chapter 5 and verse 19. The Bible tells us it is like a man who is fleeing from a lion. That's old world. Babylon. From a lion, it says, a lion and a beer met him. Beer, that's Persia. All right, old world. Or went into a house, that's America. A house, refuge. And notice, and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent beat him. Dragon, Satan. Dragon, Satan. Serpent, Satan. Dragon, serpent. Serpent, false doctrines. Genesis 3, the serpent, dragon, persecuting power. Let's move on, my friends. What about the Declaration of Independence? Liberty Bell. America once said, all men are created equal. Men have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But what will happen in America? The mystery of America, lamb-like, dragon power, my friends. She once upheld all men are created equal, but in America, what will we find? Inequality. Does it make sense, my friends? Then it says, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, it's not life, but death. No longer liberty, but what? Prosecution, persecution, imprisonment, happiness, no friends, sadness. If that's clear, send in the amen. Look at this. What about the U.S. Constitution? She once granted, my friends, freedom of religious faith. That every man being permitted to worship God according to the dictate of his conscience. But what will come to America? The mystery of iniquity. Lamb-like to dragon power. Revelation 13 verse 15. If you don't fall down and worship that image, you should be killed. The mystery of America. The mystery of iniquity. Back to the screen, republicanism and protestantism, those two horns of the lamb in America in the 1700s would now be broken in these last days. Is that going on right now? Look Mr. at the screen. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Pope of the Holy See. Mm -hmm. Protestantism, dead my friend. A church without a pope. Republicanism, a nation without a king. Who is the pope? Head of state, head of church. Read that, my friends. We are here. What about Protestantism? And what said JFK in the past? Read that, my friends. Protestantism, Republicanism are dead in America. The mystery of America, lamb-like. Dragon power, the mystery of iniquity, Lucifer, <laughs> Satan, 
professed Christians living like the devil. Let's move on. And who hates the U.S. Constitution? Ah, oh, friends. Can you see what's happening here? Let's move on. And what said the Pope? Look at the screen. Freedom of expression has limits. And if you preach against the Roman Catholic Church, the Mother Church, you will receive, says the Pope, persecution's punch, persecution's fist, the dragon power, my friends. And America will form an image to the papacy. Persecution's punch, persecution's fist, the mystery of iniquity, the mystery of America. Let's move on. Friends, you can read that. Let's move on. Is Protestantism dead, says the Pope, an apostate Protestant America? Yes, my friends. Then it says in Great Controversy, page 442, the prediction that America will speak as a dragon. Revelation 13, an exercise or the power of the first beast. Verse 11, verse 12. Watch now, friends. Plainly foretells a development, plainly foretells a development of the spirit of intolerance and persecution. So what must we expect in America? A development. A what, my friends? A development of the spirit of intolerance and persecution. Coming up, gradual, peacefully. That's in the past, 1700s. But now, gradually aggressive. Like Rome, the dragon. And the papacy, the leopard-like beast. Look at the current events now. Ready, my friends? Are you ready? Look at this, my friends. March 22nd, 2020, RT News. It says, headline, I am an American constitutional lawyer. And I see our government using COVID-19 to take away our fundamental rights. There he is, my friends, Robert Barnes. He says... Friends, pause the video and read the paragraphs. He says, the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment, the Sixth Amendment, and the Seventh Amendment are being repudiated due to combating COVID-19. Take a look, friends. He says, could we quarantine the Constitution? Are we doing it already? Then he says, my friends, lockdowns, curfews, troops on the streets. Are we seeing lockdowns, curfews, troops on the streets? Governments handing out free cash? Hmm. He says, we are already either restricting or removing all these amendments to the U.S. Constitution. Then he says, last sentence, two lines, the real pandemic threat is here. It's the panic that will quarantine our Constitution. He goes on. Then he covers the first amendment being quarantined. As if he's singing a song or he's poetic, writing a poetry in this piece. He says, last sentence, a pandemic is here. Protests, gone. Constitution, quarantined. He moved on. Second Amendment, quarantined. Mayors declare the right to ban gun sales. At the same time, governments, states are releasing criminals. Then he closes, last three lines. A pandemic is here. Self-protection sacrificed. Constitution quarantined. Fourth Amendment quarantined. Then he closes his point. A pandemic is here. Privacy ended. Constitution quarantined. He is very poetic. Fifth Amendment quarantined. 
You could read that, my friends. Pause the video. Then he says, a pandemic is here. Opportunity and property gone. Constitution quarantined. <laughs> then he goes to, then he closes with his conclusion. As if God is speaking to Balaam's donkey. As if God is speaking to the rooster, the cock, that awakened Peter to his deplorable self-deception condition. Red words, he says, a review of the data shows the pandemic is more panic than plague. Four words, time to wake up. And I say to the prodigals who have left Christianity, can you not see what's going on? The mystery of iniquity? The mystery of Lucifer becoming Satan? The mystery of America, lamb-like? Now, gradually and aggressively speaking like the dragon, will you not come home, prodigals? And those, hear me carefully, who have walked away from present truth. SDA people, can you not see? It's time to wake up. Come back home to present truth. Christ is waiting with open arms. Come home. Come home. Ye sinners, come home. Oh, my friends, will you come home? Let's move on. All right, friends, take a look at this. Here we have it, March 28th, 2020, Time Magazine. Headline reads, Rhode Island Governor announces National Guard. Troops on our streets. National Guard will go door to door to identify New Yorkers to slow COVID-19 spread. Those of you in the chat, those of you in the forum, Tamika, C. Loretto, Marie, Denise, Proverbs 3, Vicky, Devi, Justin, Camilla, June, tell me my friends, Selma, Michelle, tell me my friends, what comes to your mind? Troops going door to door to identify those who are viewed as troublers of Rhode Island? Troublers of many states. What comes to your mind? Okay, Rennie. Fiona, Yvonne, John, martial law, saving souls, inquisition. This is the inquisition. Gradually, aggressively, 2.0. Why 2.0? It's new and improved. Do you remember the Saint Bartholomew massacre? What happened in France? The Saint Bartholomew Massacre, when church and state united to rid the land of those whom they deem to be infectious to the community. Church and state went door to door and inquired within if there were Protestants, reformers in the land, keeping God's commandment and the faith of Jesus and those who were found by the inquisitors, church state union, were prosecuted, persecuted, imprisoned, and burned at the stake right there, many in front of their very homes. The mystery of iniquity, the mystery of lawlessness, the mystery of America, lamb-like dragon power. Does it make sense, my? Let's move on. Let's go deeper. It says, my friends, the Rhode Island Governor Gina announced on Friday, this past Friday, that the state would take drastic steps to pinpoint individuals who had recently traveled to New York. All right, friends, to combat COVID-19. On Friday afternoon, she said, state police will monitor highways and pull over anyone with New York plates to ask them for their contact information. Officials will order, quote, you into quarantine if you plan to stay in Rhode Island. 
Let's move on. On Saturday, the National Guard will work with local law enforcement to go door to door, inquiring within. Next sentence, obviously, we will be doing our best to target those homes where we know. How do you know, Governor? Where we know people are likely to have come from New York. Red words, she says. I know this is unusual. I know it is extreme. Lamb-like to dragon power. Let's move on. And I know some people don't agree with it. Now, that was the policy. Was it enacted? Look at this now. Yahoo.com. Rhode, Rhode Island police began. It, it began, friends. Stopping cars with New York plates when on Friday. And the National Guard went house to house. Red words. The National Guard members will be stationed at airports, Amtrak, train stations, and also bus stops. What's happening here, my friends? Then it says, uh, the citizen soldiers will be following up with people at their local residences. The mystery of America, lamb-like to dragon-like. It goes on, showing us the fines. The maximum penalty, my friends. Then others are telling us the Constitution of America is under attack. That's Revelation 13, the mystery of America. Lamb-like, dragon-like. The mystery of iniquity. Lucifer becoming Satan. All right, friends. Look at this Rhode Island. What comes to your mind? Is God telling us something? Rhode Island? What is Rhode Island known for in the forum? In the chat room. Okay, Samara. Rhode Island. Stella, Tamika. What is Rhode Island known for in America's history? It was the, it was the first state in America, colony, to champion freedom of conscience. What is the smallest state in the all of the United States of America, it's Rhode Island. What is the smallest nation in the whole world? The Vatican. And the Vatican, the papacy, hates the U.S. Constitution. He wants to destroy it. And Rhode Island, my friends, Roger Williams, championed liberty of conscience. Yet this has begun where? Governor Gina, Rhode Island. Look at the screen. Read that. Pause the video. Read about Roger Williams. Move on. Red words. His little state, Rhode Island, became the asylum of the oppressed. It became, my friends, the house of civil and religious liberty. The cornerstones of the American Republic. There it is, my friends, the Vatican, the smallest king, the smallest horn. Two horns like a lamb. The papacy has one horn. Horn of the smallest country in the world. You could read that, my friends. Please read that, BBC News. Look at this. Mr. Trump entered the smallest state when he met the Pope in 2000. And 17. All right, friends. Does that make sense? Look at in this now. In light of that risk and in light of the fact. Listen to Governor Gina from Rhode Island. In light of that risk and in light of the fact that folks from New York present a different kind of danger to the people of Rhode Island, we're going to take a more aggressive, pinpointed approach for the foreseeable future as it relates to people coming to Rhode Island from New York. By the way, this is in line with guidance from the White House and the CDC and experts. Who are the experts? Jesuits? Yesterday I announced and today I reiterated. Let's move on. Oh, friends. Oh, friends. Aggressive measures. Prodigals come home. Lukewarm wake up.
Listen, friends, watch this. March 13, 2020, Bill Gates steps down from Microsoft board to focus on philanthropy. BBC News, the last paragraph, one sentence says, Bill Gates says he wants to focus on global health. Just in time for a global pandemic, Mr. Gates? And to tackle climate change? Look what he said, my friends. Bill Gates on his Twitter page, he says, it's time to bring about vaccines to combat COVID-19. When was that? March 10th, 2020. From Bill Gates' Twitter account. Do you know what we're told, my friends? Listen what this says. Listen carefully. Uh, $10 billion over the next 10 years uh, to make it the year of the vaccines. W what does that mean exactly? $10 billion he wants to give to make it the year of the vaccines? Listen what he said next. Bill Gates. We have success on it. And the, the benefits there in terms of reducing sickness, reducing the population growth, it really allows the society a chance. Just to casually, to reduce the population growth. So why is Bill Gates a spokesperson of how to combat climate change? He wants to reduce population growth with vaccines, etc. Move on. Listen again, friends. That's headed up to about $9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. Mm. And what are we told? He, right there, his own mouth, Bill Gates, in red, the red box, he wants to bring about new vaccines to combat viruses, even COVID-19. Amen. And what are we told in Great Controversy, page 589? while appearing to the children of men as a great physician who can heal all their maladies, even COVID-19, those same persons under Satan will bring the diseases and disasters until populous cities are reduced to ruin and desolation. Would that one sentence apply to Bill Gates and others? Second paragraph, Satan and his human agents appear as a benefactor of the race. Oh yes, but what do they bring? Disease and disaster. If that's clear, my friends, send in the amens. So why did I go back to Bill Gates? Just because he stepped down from Microsoft and now being a great philanthropist, a great benefactor of the race? COVID-19 pandemic. Look at this, friends. Now, what, what is Bill Gates pushing? He's pushing what is called digital certificates to prove your health. Why should we prove our health? Where's our freedoms? What about the statement that you are innocent until what, my friends, finish that in the forum, in the chat room. Mm -hmm. You are innocent, thanks Christian, until proven guilty. But now he's saying, you need this. Read that paragraph, my friends. Let's move on. I covered this yesterday in the Sabbath's message. Please, friends, read that. Everybody needs it. But in what context? Travel, supplies, loans, even for employment, you will need a digital certificate. So we can know, red words, if you receive the vaccine or you have not received the vaccine. But what does Bill Gates say the vaccine is for? To reduce population growth by 10 or 15 percent. How many millions of people must die? Seven hundred million people friends and counting let's move on there it is you could read that pause the video and read that world news then i'll come back to america i'm gonna show you why bill gates is so important look at this now let's go to the east 
And then we come back to America. March 22nd, 2020, the Jerusalem Post writes, headline, Israeli doctor in Italy. Says what? We no longer help those people who are over 60 years of age. If you have contracted a pestilence, you're over 60, we will leave you to die. I'll come back to Bill Gates. We will leave you to die because this is bigger than just Bill Gates. It goes back to Satan. And Satan is not only working through Bill Gates. All right, friends, look at this now. USA Today, let's come to America now. March 22nd, 2020, headline, who lives and who dies? In worst case, in worst case, coronavirus scenario, ethics guide choices on who gets care. They are rationing health care. If you are elderly, you may left to die. Listen, friends, to this now. CBN News, March 26th. Listen. With the worst of coronavirus still yet to come, there's concern about overwhelming our hospitals. Some say before long, health care providers will have to decide who to save. It's especially concerning among seniors and the disabled who mm. fear they may face discrimination and be left to die. Paul Strand talked to a leading bioethicist we can who's stop working right to here, prevent that from happening. Professor Kamosi, right now some states, are they considering can actually stop right rationing health care over this coronavirus? Yeah, not only considering, but the state of Washington, Washington State, That's actually serious. has an approved protocol. What are your thoughts, my friends, in the forum? Your thoughts in the chat room? Do you see why God gave to the Seventh-day Adventist people a true health care system? What about sanitariums? Thanks, Christian. What about sanitariums? We should never put the elderly into group homes. Take care of your own. And those who can't, the church must provide for those of the household of faith. Not on the elderly, but also the disabled. They don't care for us, my friends. And listen now, come back now. Put the nail in the sure place, Bill Gates. Listen, friends, to what he says. And a lack of willingness to say, you know, is spending a million dollars on that last three months of life for that patient would it be better not to lay off the, those 10 teachers and to make that trade-off in medical costs? But that's called the death panel, uh, mm -hmm. and you're not supposed to have that discussion. Mm -hmm. Friends, are these points clear, my friends? And that's why it's time for aggressive, effective evangelism. Prodigals, come home. Every time I try to close the thoughts, my friends, look with me. In Luke chapter 15, it's time to come home. I'm wondering, what are the sentiments of individuals who have left Christianity as they are seeing these signs that they once believed would come to fulfill prophecy? Are they thinking of coming back home? It's time to come home. What about those who have walked away from the Seventh-day Adventist church? They once believed these things would come. Now they're seeing it. What are they thinking? Well, let me help you. Christ is saying, come home, my son. Come home, my daughter. Question. What about those who remain SDA, just in name, nominally, but have left present truth and, have not, and are now living like the world? They once preached what are now transpiring based on prophecy. But they have forsaken these truths. What are they thinking? Let me help you. It's time to come back to present truth. My friends, if those points are clear, send in the amens. It's time to come home. Father in heaven, we thank you for these words. Save us, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. And bring us back for part two. For Christ's sake. Amen. Maranatha.